Hi, my name is Rashad. We're here with Anthony. Hey, guys. And we got Ava on the camera. We're doing episode eight of, which is Closed Guard for the Scramblers Guide. If you're watching the videos and upload history, you may have seen episode nine already. That's just because I posted it in advance because it was a little hard to sync up with everyone. That's just like an analysis of my most recent match so you can see like what some of this stuff looks like. But today for Closed Guard, we're gonna be trying to pass his super strong Closed Guard. And what I like to use, or some stuff to look forward to, arm drag pass, violator, Sao Paulo, double unders, and some belly down attacks. Now besides episode nine, episode 10, hopefully we'll see if I can get some of Ivy's footage. Some of us call her Rashad Jr. because she harasses people with some of this stuff. But unlike me, she has um, a traditional jujitsu game that she blends it with. So if you already have a traditional game, it'll probably look more like what she's doing. After that, that's gonna be like the end of the series. So, and I, another idea I have in the future, I wanna do like a kind of like a autobiography like lesson thing, calling the upbringing of a Bengali American. But now I have like six episodes. We just, oh, we're, we're trying out a new mic. So that's part of why I got the new mic for our podcast. So, subscribe if you wanna see that. Now, let's see, let's start off with the arm drag series. So you go down, Anthony. So arm drag, we're gonna do, if you have his arm, but you can do it without the arm. And depending on if your knees are on the inside or the outside, it can lead to a different pass. So let's say first we are able to get his arm and we get our knees inside. So we're gonna go for like a butterfly mount pass. So if I'm gonna close guard, I'm gonna go for an arm drag. So you know how to do an arm drag from standing. You just grab the wrist and you try and get your, up, your same side arm, so this is the right arm, my right arm, to pull, switch my left hand to his elbow so I can push it down. This hand, as I'm pulling, slides up. My right hand slides up to his wrist and pushes down on his belly. And I start pushing into him real hard. And as I'm doing that, I'm gonna start sliding my knees in so I can stand up and break his guard. And if I do, let me come inside. I'm gonna start sliding over for a butterfly mount, and then from there, if you can't get his hand inside, that's even more convenient for you. But if he gets his arm out, it's not a big deal. You're gonna start coming up for a mount pass. Now, if you aren't able to get the arm and your knees end up on the outside, it's not a big deal. Same concept, you wanna push down on his hips. This one's gonna be a lot more smashy because he's probably not gonna like your hands here. So he's gonna be trying to grab my wrist and pull my hands off. So I'm really gonna be pushing down into him to keep my hands here and just slowly stand up. And because I don't have as much um, control of him, I would probably keep my knees on the outside. And I split his guard. And since my legs are outside of his, what he might do is try and get a butterfly hooks in. If he does that, I'm not gonna try and prevent it. I will try and prevent his hands from um, getting my ankles, but I won't prevent him from getting butterfly hooks. What I'm gonna try and do is sit on his butterfly hooks. So I'm gonna come forward, push, let's say, his right knee down to my left hand to the side, and all I have to do is step my left leg over, and then you can start working across the pass. <clears throat> and we're going like on the details like usual. If you want to see a lot of details, comment one of the moves that you like. We're mostly focusing on the transitions because it'll take forever if we go over the details too. So the next one we're gonna be doing violator, and that can lead to some straight ankles, Knee slice pass, back step pass, navy ride, and leg drag. So let's say we go with hands in the armpit, violator. Someone asked you if the, the class is canceled. But today, there shouldn't be any kids class. Sorry, we got some technical difficulties. Yeah, you can just keep playing. Um, so I'll just keep talking. So what we're about to do is a violator. There's gonna be some straight ankles that you can go for. And then after those straight ankles, I'll actually go for a knee slice. After the knee slice, and that's depending if I can get the underhook. If I can't get the underhook, then I'm going for the overhook, in which case we're gonna be going for um, a back step pass. And if he tries to come up, you can go for a guillotine. 
think I think I just set out what we're gonna do, so I can just go into it. So another way to control the arms instead of an arm drag is if you can get your hands in the armpits. You can be mean with it. Uh, I usually don't, but you can by sticking your thumb into their armpit as you do it. But I usually try and go for the biceps anyways, so that's not as relevant. That's usually just if you want to be mean, which sometimes it has its purposes. And you're going to try and get a knee in. So let's try and get my right knee in between his butt crack, basically. I'm going to try and stand up, and I'm going to slide my knee out. And once I can do that, I'm going to tilt this knee down to the ground towards his right hip. And this is the situation where I captured his leg on the way in. Normally, when you're going for knee slice, you're going to start going for underhook on this side. But if I was able to capture his leg like I did there, you start going for a few straight ankles. So if you can get right on the ankle here, you can start going for like a standing version. Another one that's nice is to go belly down. So you just get your head to the mat. And then you can start stomping on your own foot. Another one that works too, but you can give up a sweep for him if he gets up and defends it, is if you fall back and my left leg will step on his hip. I'm gonna try and finish your ankle with um, single leg after right? But if he defends this and comes up, now I might give up a pass, which, so this one isn't really my preferred one, but let's say you go back down. So now if I'm, oh, that's actually good. Yeah, that's, that's actually something that I tell these guys, which is when you go for your violator, you wanna go straight in the middle because it's gonna hit their balls, assuming you're competing against guys. And it's his fault because he's supposed to pick a hip to switch to. So if he switches to this hip, he's giving me the knee slice pass. If we switch it to this hip, then I'm gonna start working on butterfly mount pass. If he just stays in the middle, you don't have a pass, you just grind his balls. Unless they have a cup, and then the rules might be a little different. And you just come to that computer, you're not allowed to compete with cups, so I don't know about all that. But in MMA, maybe this won't work. They probably have a metal cup and it might hurt your own shin. But okay. So I'm gonna start fighting for the underhook. As I start trying to step my left leg forward, and it's gonna start putting a lot of pressure on his leg. He's gonna try and get his leg out of there. And when he does that, the knee slice pass comes so easily. And if he doesn't do that, I can actually hurt his knee. So make sure you do a slow in class because you can't hurt the knee if you go for that really explosively. I was going for a slow on someone and I don't think they knew what I was doing. So their knee actually ended up getting hurt from that. But let's say I'm over and he got the underhook. He's gonna try and grab his head and fall back. And then if you have this situation, preferably with more head control, if you stomp with your left leg around his leg, you can clear your leg out and come up for side control or even more aggressively for mount. But if he's coming up during this moment, oh my gosh, the other leg in. Switch this hand to a, a guillotine. And if you can finish a guillotine pretty solid here, if it's really good and he's smart, he's gonna try and fall over. So you fall into your back. And you need to follow up to um, mount if you want to finish. But if you end up to side control, you're not going to get the finish, but you are going to get your pass. And you can still start working on for the mounted guillotine. Oh, there was one more thing um, from the straight ankles, which is if they're a little strong. So if you, if you have their leg captured and he drives this way into me, and now I'm falling towards the turtle and he's trying to come up, just keep this leg. That's the most important thing. If you have this leg and you keep stuck, you're gonna have a really hard time coming up. You can try and fight him back into this position. So that's the main thing if you're here. Focus more on the offense. If you make him worry about his leg, whatever he's going for, he's gonna bail on it, like falling back towards his back because he doesn't want that pressure on his leg. But it's in a somewhat awkward angle when you shelf it on your thigh. Now another option, when you got the violator, 
and they're here, instead of picking this up and racking it, is to try and push it down and get both shins over. You can still go for a lot of the old stuff, like for example, you could go for uh, knee slice pass, but there's some other fun ones that can open up. You can start going for the navy ride again. Let's see what was that. If you go for the navy ride from episode six, top half, boom. And if he's not able to move, you can start torquing his knee. If he straightens his leg up, you can start going for a patella lock. Or if you go forward, and so on episode six. So if it's not interesting to you, do take a look at episode six. I'm trying to take pressure off his leg. So normally you really drive your shins on his leg. I'm trying to not hurt his bottom leg right now, his right leg. Episode two, part wrestling part one. If you can't go for the, um, the telelock, you can start coming over for a banana split. Pass, well, it's a sub at first, and then a pass if not, so if he doesn't tap. So, <clears throat> let's come back before I got the Navy ride. Another nice thing about getting both legs stapled over, if there's ever a moment to switch your right knee over, it's very easy to start going for the butterfly mount pass. But, if he doesn't like this and he's smart, one thing he might try to do is kick his leg even further. So, the, this is the Navy ride position. I think somebody's not. Alright. So, who was that? Oh, true, true. Yeah, come in. But be quiet if you can be recording, and then after that, we want to drill with you. Okay. All right, Mr. Anthony. So, usually when you go for a Navy ride, you want their ankle to be close to their butt, but they might straighten it out, in which case you start going for a patella lock and your banana split pass. But he might bring it over even further. If it brings it over here, it's not a big deal. As he's doing it, before he's able to like try and kick me over, yeah. Okay, go back. Make sure as he's doing this, you come forward immediately so that he's captured. If his knee is towards his head, excuse me, very weak, you can actually start grabbing a cradle and donkey kick your right leg out, and now you're in a leg drag. Oh, you good? I can't got his balls again. I have two good habits. And then donkey kick your left leg out, and you're in side control. Instead of donkey kicking this leg out, my left leg to come to side control, you can start setting up a cross step. As I said before, his his uh, right leg is down towards the mat, so just get your left, your right leg over. Make sure he doesn't capture it. Boom. And that's pretty easy to start setting up what's like a knee slice. Now, one more thing he might do, which is really if you just had really bad controlling of his legs when you're in this position. So you got his right leg stapled with both your shins. He's able to retract this back and kick you, which first of all takes a lot of mobility on his part, especially if I'm leaning forward. But if he kicks you and you fall back and he doesn't come up, you just, well, let's just scramble at this point. Your best bet, which is still only if he comes up, as he kicks me back and I grab this, uh, his uh, left leg, I'm going to start getting my butterfly hooks in on his right leg and then start trying to feed this over for a back take. But if he's not that aggressive, he's just going to kick you off and you're, you kind of reset from a really good position if you're able to stay both, both of his legs. But at least don't lose it. I mean, at least land back in neutral. Don't let him end up mounting you or something. But now we're going to go over South Paulo with and without the arms. You can go for a straight ankle, top half, double shun his leg again. <clears throat> so, the violator is really good if you're postured up on him. But if, let's say, he um, brings my chest towards him by pulling the knees in, yep. what you want to do is fall to your left side. 
with your left hand in his armpit and your left elbow crosses the ribs. And this is the no arm version of the Sao Paulo. My right hand is gonna start working towards his hip. And I'm gonna start pinning his left leg on the mat by getting to reverse Kaskatami from inside his guard. Now, if I'm in this position, I'm gonna start looking for his ankles and assuming they're closed. I'm gonna step my right leg over and I'm gonna start hipping in to get a straight ankle on him. Now, if he lets go of this because he doesn't like the idea of being in a straight ankle, that's when you can start securing your top half for the episode six stuff. Or instead of securing top half, keep this uh, right shin in and try and work your left leg out. And if you get your left leg out, you can get both shins on his right leg and it's the same situation as we were earlier. Now, if we got the arm, you just plant his arm down, whichever side you want. Let's say we got his right arm down. Get your shoulder in his face, get your butt up, and start walking towards that arm. But keep his hand plant, planted where it was, so that way your right hand can feed it. You can switch it to your right hand. Your left hand is gonna go to his hip, and you can start doing everything we were doing a second ago. But you also have an arm now. Alternatively, this is a style that I saw from Neil Melanson. You're gonna get your right knee under his butt and rack him onto you. And you wanna try and elevate to like arch his back out. And you try and push your shin, left shin inside. And then you can start donkey kicking your right leg out to get that shin in. And now we're in the same situation as before, but now we got an arm. All right, now we're gonna go for double unders to stack pass, gut wrench, cross body back hooks, and some stuff if he's belly down. So if I am postured back on him, I start going for double unders, like if I'm really back. The main thing to watch out for if he goes for a hip bump sweep, you wanna do that? Do you remember the hip bump sweep? Oh. You like to bring me downwards? I like to set it up first. Get an actual feel. He's reading my mind. All right, go back. <laughs> so if he if he's smart because he wants to set it up, and the way you set it up is you want to do the hip bump sweep when they're moving backwards. So he pulled me in so that I would resist and go back, and then he went forward. So let's say he did not set it up, and you're already postured back. So if he comes up, that's when you start going for your south palo. You jump in on him as he's coming up you should be able to force him back down and you're gonna be in a really good position to go for that. <clears throat> so don't worry about them going with hip bumps, basically. The main, main thing to watch out for on that is if you're down here and you come back, and in his case, he's setting it up, so watch out for these guys. All right, so the way I like to set up my double under is I do a little non-committally. I just put my hands behind my back and I start trying to separate his ankles, but I go back. At any moment, if he tries to like bring me back forward, then I'm gonna start working South Paulo or uh, Violator, you know? I don't wanna go so deep with my arms that I'm stuck here and I fall forward like this. Especially in Gi, even in Nogi, you can go for Ezekiel. But in Gi, it's gonna be even worse if he goes for uh, Lapel Choke. But I can split this off. I'm gonna start getting a gable grip around his legs. And I usually don't care too much what they're doing with their hands or knees. There are a lot of counters, but the main thing is that you want to smash him and make him hate his life in this position. So the way I like to do that is really crunch everything in and start racking him up. And once you start racking him up, start bringing his knees towards his face. And I don't want to pass, actually, I want to submit him. So I'm going to start driving his knee into his face until he is doing everything he can to let me pass. I'm still not going to let him. But if somehow he's able to get out of this position, the only way out is if he lets me pass. But preferably, if you tap someone there, everyone's gonna think he's a scrub and you're a beast, and that's way better. <clears throat> but sometimes, sometimes you you got a little too hungry and you went for the pass a little too early, and you start trying to go for the pass, and then you start trying to turtle. And now you're not really in such a good position. If he's here, I'm start going for my gut wrench, reverse gut wrench. Try and slide your left knee inside. As you can see, my left knee, boom, it's under his body. I'm just gonna fall back 
And as I'm pulling back, my left leg shoots out a little bit so that I can secure a cross body hook. With that, I can start going for a cast lesser or I can start going for a back take. Now, go back to turtle. So we're getting into like wrestling territory. Um, and freestyle wrestling give points for turning him onto his back. And usually the, the counter for the reverse gut wrench is to um, belly down. So this is just a good attack as well if he's in turtle or you're trying to force turtle on him. And now we're gonna do more freestyle wrestling stuff. So let's say he's driving too much in the opposite direction, so he's going that way. I'm gonna start tilting um, my whole body towards my left. So I'm gonna elevate up, tilt, step to my right foot forward. Left leg is gonna rotate back, pick him up. And since you're just gonna make sure you bring him down really slowly. And you can start forcing a uh, double under his pass on him from turtle. And he was trying to move away to alleviate pressure and I was letting him. You can really slam them. Actually, um, I got called for slamming this guy, cautioned when we competed once. So I had to calm down. So don't assume that people will not try things on you. I'd rather not be in a position to get slammed than to let someone have that happen to me. But he didn't beat me that comp, so don't, don't question, he's a beast. <clears throat> so let's say he bellies down because he doesn't want me to pick him up. And that's usually what he does from the position. And so the way he usually sets it up, he doesn't want to get crunched up. So Anthony starts straightening out his body already. And now it's really hard for me to bring his knees to his head. And then he starts tilting over. And now it's going to be really hard to pick him up because he's going down. So what I will go for is an ankle right. My right leg steps over his left. And if I'm able to bring it up, you can start going for a Turk, and not Turk, a bow, a wrestling bow, which just means I'm gonna start trying to keep his chest facing this way while I'm taking his leg this way to put a lot of spinal pressure on him. And the best thing to go for in my opinion here is to slide your right knee up and your left leg, and you're gonna start setting up tech mount. But if you weren't able to get that bow, slide your right knee over. So what I mean by that is uh, make your leg flat on the ground. So I'm not able to pick his uh, left leg up. I'm going to slide my right knee over his right leg. I'm going to use my right hand to plant it on the ground. Now I have my top crab. From here, you can start working hammer locks or Americanas, dragon sleeper, or rear naked. If he tries to roll, like if he tries to bring his shoulder in and tilt, just follow towards, in this case, mount or chair suit. Or if he came the other way, north-south for like a guillotine cradle situation. So if he bellies down, it's going to start getting really scrambly and wrestly heavy. So just make sure you keep the pressure on his body. So. That's too much happens. Go, go back to your chest. Someone else are knocking. Go back to your chest. But you want to see who it is though? Let's go. Alright, so the other one is if you start getting your elbow in the back of his head and he starts trying to turtle, you can start getting the hook in. Just because I got both hooks. But if you only get one hook, it's not a big deal. You can start working the cross body series. Oh, far leg bow. So go back to belly down. So the other one is if you start trying to step over his far leg and if you're able to get this up, you can start pulling him towards you and preferably keeping his chest away. And then now you can start working your right hook in and your left hook. But that's episode eight. Um, so episode nine will be analysis of me. Episode 10, hopefully we get IB. Another series coming up, I'll bring up Bengali Americans. So subscribe for that. If you want to give me a like, thank you.